This video demonstrates the installation of the GE Monogram 24 and 30 inch built in column refrigerators and 18 24 and 30 inch built in column freezers using dual integrated method for a new construction installation in dual retrofit method for existing cutouts. Depending on the combination of units and the installation method, the cabinet width and other dimensions will vary. Refer to the combination shown on screen for exact dimensions. A minimum of 3.5 inches finish return matching the cabinet exterior is recommended on all sides, top and at front of opening. Before proceeding with the installation, determine the location and identify the main clearance specifications of the refrigerator and freezer unit. To ensure optimum performance of the unit, consider the following recommendations shown on screen. For all models, the cutout depth must be 25 inches and the overall cabinet height must be 84 inches. Heater unification kit ZKUN is required for all dual installations. For dual retrofit installation, the cutout depth must be 24 inches and the overall cabinet height must be 83 and a half to 84 and a half inches. The cabinet width shown on screen for different combinations. Trim retro kits are required for 41.5 inches or 47.5 inches wide opening to ensure proper spacing. The door swing is set to 115 degrees by default. However, you can adjust the same to 90 degrees using the hinge limiter pin if the clearance to adjacent wall or cabinets is restricted. For a 90 degree swing, allow 5 and 1 8 inches clearance to a wall. When installed in a corner, for a full 115 degree swing, allow 15 inch clearance to the wall on 18 inch and 24 inch models. Allow 16 and a 9 16 inch clearance on 30 inch models. This applies to both dual integrated and retrofit installations. If installation requires the door swing to be reversed, follow all steps to reverse the door swing before the unit is removed from the shipping skid. For reversing the door swing, refer to reverse door swing chapter at the end of this video. The electrical and water outlets must be located on the back wall for both the units. A separate 115 volt 60 hertz 15 or 20 amp power supply and a properly grounded branch circuit or circuit breaker is recommended for each product. Install a properly grounded three-prong electrical receptacle onto the back wall. Before installing the water line, it is required to install an easily accessible shutoff valve. The water line should be a quarter inch OD copper tubing or a smart connect kit. The tubing must be eight feet long to extend from the shutoff valve located on the back wall to the front of the unit. The main tools that are needed to support the installation of this product are displayed on the screen. Note that these tools are not supplied with a product package. The main accessories that are needed to support the installation of this product are displayed on the screen. The hardware products supplied along with the product are displayed on the screen. These parts are included in the kit. The kit ZKR parts supplied along with the product are displayed on the screen. To begin, ensure the floor is clean and free of any debris and cover the floor with a plastic covering and retain it throughout the installation. Remove the outer box and inspect for any damages. Remove the hardware bag. If you are planning for a 90 degree opening, install the hinge limiter pin provided in the hardware kit in the top hinge before the unit is removed from the skid. Remove the front access cover from the unit by removing the two quarter inch hex head screws and set them aside. From each side, remove the two 3 8 inch screws and the two 7 16 inch screws from the skid. Tip the unit to the side. You should tip it enough to remove the shipping foam block from between the unit above the skids. Repeat on the other side. Roll the unit off the back side of the skid carefully. Unpack the other product and provide space between products for ZKUN heater installation. 
To secure the unit from tipping, install the anti-tip bracket from the hardware kit. The anti-tip bracket must be screwed either to the rear wall using the three holes in the center or to the floor using the four holes on the sides. Use the floor mounting method if the bracket is not against a wall. For floor mounting, screw the anti-tip bracket 25 inches from the front of the opening. In the case of dual retrofit installation, mount the bracket 23 inches from the front of opening. Refer to the table given in the installation guide to mark the exact location for mounting the bracket. For installing a 24 inches refrigerator in a 24 inches freezer unit, measure 29 and a half inches from the right side and mark the location. For the right side, measure again from the right side of the opening till 5 and 3 4 inches and mark the location. Mark three holes for rear wall mounting or four holes for floor mounting. Mount the anti-tip bracket centered at the marks and flush to the wall. Repeat the steps for the second unit. The bracket hardware is provided for mounting into wood, steel studs, and concrete. Refer to the installation guide to know the tools required for each mounting type. If the enclosure is deeper than 25 and a half inches, the anti-tip bracket should be secured to the floor 25 inches from front of the enclosure. To prepare the unit, place the right-hand unit in front of the installation opening in a way that the unit is in front of the intended installation location. Unpack the Heater Unification Kit ZKUN. Clean the surface with alcohol where the heater and clips will be installed. Install adhesive heater on the outside of the unit to the left side of the case of right side product. It must be installed 4 inches below the case top. Heater should be centered front to back on the metal case. Ensure the heater connector cord is towards the top of the unit when installed. Next, install the transformer into the case top assembly. Remove the cover top by removing 8 hex screws. Remove the left front screw from the case top. Place the transformer and secure it with the screws removed. Connect the 2-pin transformer connector to the heater connector and 3-pin connector to panel control. Ensure that the locking tabs are engaged. Verify and ensure that the master switch is on. Finally, replace the cover top with the 8 hex screws. Longer power cords are required for retrofit installation. Power cords are included in 42-inch ZKR42N and 48-inch ZKR48N kits. Replace power cords on both units. To remove existing short power cord with string assembly, first, remove the quarter-inch hex screws attaching rear access cover. Unplug 3-pin power cord connector inside the machine compartment by pressing on the sides to release locking tabs. Remove the power cord green ground quarter-inch hex screw. Remove the strain relief quarter-inch hex screw. Now, install the new longer power cord. Plug in the 3-pin connector. Install the power cord green ground screw in the power cord strain relief. Repeat the steps for the second unit. This installation requires a potable cold water supply for automatic ice makers and auto pitcher operations. Shut off the main water supply. Install a shutoff valve between the water valve and cold water pipe. Connect the plastic tubing between the house's cold water line supply and the water connection location at the front of the unit. Turn on the main water supply in flush debris. Run about a quart of water through the tubing into a bucket. Shut off water supply the shut off valve. Repeat for other product. For dual retrofit installation, connect one end of the jumper water line from the ZKR42N or ZKR48N trim retro kit to the house cold water line. Use a wrench or hand tight the compression nut. Connect the other end of the jumper water line to the water fitting T supplied in the trim retro kit. Tighten the compression nut. For installing each unit, you will need an 8-foot water line. Tubing should be long enough to extend to the front of the unit. 
Allow enough tubing to accommodate bin leading into the water line connection. Tip the unit gently on its side to route water line underneath and to the front of the appliance. Only use the GE Appliances approved tubing that is supplied in the Smart Connect refrigerator tubing kits or copper tubing. Tape the water line to the wall and floor approximately 3 inches to the left of the anti-tip bracket. Apply tape about every 5 inches toward the front of the opening. Do not tape near the cabinet front in order to pull and keep the tubing hidden under the unit. To connect the water supply, locate and bring the tubing to the front of the cabinet. Remove strain relief screw to allow for enough slack to make a proper water connection. Set the screw aside to replace later. Insert the molded end of the tubing into the refrigerator or to the freezer connection. Tighten the compression nut until it is just hand tight. Follow the instructions provided with the tubing. Over tightening may cause leaks. Repeat the steps for the second unit. Turn on the water and check for leaks. For retrofit models, reinstall the rear access covers and bottom back unification bracket. To install the bottom back unification bracket, loosen the two bottom screws of rear access covers of both units and remove the top screws. Hang the unification bracket to the bottom screws and reassemble the screws at the top. Tighten screws to tie units together. Now, install the bottom front unification bracket with four screws using a 3 8 inch hex bolt. To install the top unification bracket, loosen the back two screws on top of the unit and remove the two middle screws. You assemble the bracket to the back screws and reinstall the middle screws. Tighten screws to tie the units together. Install the trim kit side rails to the exposed right and left case walls with seven screws on each side using number eight Phillips head screw. Pre-assemble the trim kit top rail and corner keys using the number six Phillips head screw. Install one corner key to each end of the top trim. Make sure you do not over tighten the screws to prevent damage to the parts. Remove and retain the three one quarter inch hex screws from each unit. Fit the top trim and side trim rails together by sliding the exposed edges of the corner keys into the right and left trim kit side rails. Press downward on the top trim until each corner key is fully seated in each side rail. Tighten the corner keys using the number six Phillips head screw. Finally, secure the top trim to the case with six screws previously removed. Before inserting the unit into the surround, plug the unit into the outlet in the wall. Turn on water at the shutoff valve. To prevent the risk of electrical shock, do not touch the wiring or electrical components inside the compressor compartment while the appliance is plugged in and the front access cover is not in place. Open doors to make sure lights are on. If they are not on, remove the front enclosure which is secured by six quarter inch hex screws to switch on the master switch. Assemble the enclosure again. Find the installation string that is attached to the door of the unit. The string is attached to the power cord. Place power cord on its edge and pull under product between rollers and away from the anti-tip bracket. Pull the string tight to ensure the power cord is routed underneath the unit. As you walk the unit back into the opening, you should pull the string tight to make sure the power cord is routed underneath the unit. Also, make sure not to touch the cabinetry on the sides and the top to prevent damage. For dual integrated installation, both door faces should be 7 8 inches behind the front face of surrounding cabinets on either a stainless or custom panel installation. For dual retrofit installation, the back side of the top and side retro trims should be touching the cabinet surround when the units are pushed back. Replace the waterline strain relief screw. Store the access string and water tubing under the unit. All models have four-point leveling. The front is supported by leveling legs. The rear is supported by adjustable wheels. Both are accessible from the front of the unit. For best results, raise the unit higher to contact the anti-tip bracket and proceed with leveling. To level the back of the unit, turn the 7 16 inch hex nut located above the front wheels. Turn clockwise to raise or counterclockwise to lower the unit. For front leveling, Use a 7 16 inch open-end wrench. 
Adjust height of unit to match installation cutout opening 84 inches. The unit should be level and plumb with cabinetry. Note, adjusting the rollers and leveling legs height should be done a few turns at a time on each unit. Don't crank one side all the way up. The rear leveling wheels and front leveling legs are limited to a maximum height adjustment of one inch. If you attempt to raise the unit more than one inch, you will damage the front leveling legs and the rear leveling wheels. For flash installation, ensure that the front surface of the product door is 7 8 inch behind front face of surrounding cabinets before securing the product to the surrounding cabinetry. This allows space to accommodate the thickness of the door panel. Open the water filter access door and locate the filter and filter removal tool. To remove the filter, use the tool to rotate the filter a quarter turn counterclockwise and then pull it out. Note that the water system will not function without the filter in place. To secure the unit, free drill 1 16 inch holes in both the sides of the surround, half an inch deep, through holes in the enclosure. Drive four quarter inch hex head screws to both sides to surrounding cabinetry. Note, this step does not eliminate the tip over hazard and cannot replace the anti-tip safety hardware. Reinstall the water filter. Using the filter removal tool, rotate the filter a quarter turn clockwise to align with a blue arrow on the filter. Return the filter removal tool to mounting hook. Close the compartment door. Verify the two quarter inch hex head screws assembled to the handle side of both freezer and fresh food columns. Install the access cover onto the unit with two quarter inch hex head screws. Install front mullion trim between the two units. Open the doors and push a flexible dart in the area between the units. Top dart of the mullion must align with bottom edge of the case trim. Open both enclosure doors to 90 degrees. Snap the trim bracket between the water filter access enclosures above the displays. Now, install toe kick onto the unit. Insert the toe kick into the slot in the front access cover by rotating it toward you. Push the bottom portion of the toe kick towards the product and slide into place. The kit for the installation of stainless steel door panel consists of either of the two handle options, minimalist handles or statement handles. The stainless steel door panel kits come with mounting hardware already installed as left hand or right hand swing doors. Refer to the chart for the desired door panel kit number. Either minimalist or statement handles can be ordered for use with the stainless steel door kits. Handle kits are not included with a stainless door panel kit. Note that the improper installation can lead to a finger pinch point hazard between the side door trim and the cabinets when operating the door, especially with children. To minimize the risk of the finger pinch point hazard, you must follow the installation instructions for cabinet dimensions, trim assembly, and door stop angle. Remove the center mounting brackets on stainless door panel door and retain for reuse. To install the stainless door panel, first remove the four T30 Torx screws and bottom hinge cover from the refrigerator product door and set aside. Open the refrigerator door to 90 degrees. Slide the stainless door panel onto the refrigerator door so that the stainless door panel gets interlocked on the top and bottom of the refrigerator door brackets. Then, slowly close the door after centering the panel on the door. Ensure that the panel does not contact the surrounding cabinetry. With the refrigerator door fully closed, ensure that the target gap between the stainless panel and the cabinetry surround is 1 8 inch. Adjust the top and side gaps of the stainless door panel with 12 set screws provided for door adjustments using an 8 inch Allen wrench. Each corner of the stainless door panel consists of three adjustment set screws. Please note that the vertical set screws at the top and bottom mounting brackets are partially hidden beneath the brackets. To install set screw for flush mounting, first verify the gap in alignment between the stainless panel and the cabinetry at the hinge of the first door. Set the gap between the doors. Note that for dual installation, set the handle side first. If the gap at the top is too large or uneven, use the set screws on the top bracket 
to adjust the gap until the gap is equal along the entire vertical section. If needed, slide the stainless panel to the side to reset the gap of 1 8 inch. To align the stainless door panel to the cabinetry, first adjust the vertical adjustment set screws at the top corners. Drive the set screw clockwise to move the door upwards. Move to the bottom corner and install the set screws. Do not tighten them yet. Install and adjust the four outermost horizontal set screws at the corners. If stainless door panel is too deep inside of the surrounding cabinetry, turn the set screws clockwise to move the door outwards until the panel is in position. Install and adjust the four innermost horizontal set screws at the corners. If stainless door panel is too far outside of the surrounding cabinetry, turn the set screws clockwise to move the door inwards until the panel is in position. Note that the set screws on each door panel corners can be adjusted independently. Again, note that you will need to make several small adjustments on all four corners to align the door. Once the stainless door panel is in the desired position, the remaining set screw should be driven and firmly tightened to properly secure the stainless door panel. Repeat the steps for the other product. Next, secure the center mounting bracket using square washer and one quarter inch Phillips head screw. Remove the protective film that may be present on the door or door fronts. Install the hinge covers at the top and bottom of the refrigerator door with four T30 Torx screws each. Secure the hinge cover at the top with one T10 Torx screw. There are two door trims to install on the stainless door panel. The door trim for the handle side is a long trim and the door trim for the hinge side is a shorter trim. The side trim consists of an outer trim and an inner trim. Inner and outer trim should be adjusted vertically to align with the top and bottom hinge covers during test fit. Note that adjustments must be made before adhering to the side of the door. Note these trims slide in and out to hide the gap between the product door and the stainless door. To install the handle side trim, clean all sides along with the top and bottom hinge covers using rubbing alcohol for better trim adhesion. Test the fit of the handle trim with the side of the door without removing the backing of the handle side trim tape. Place the top of the outer trim on the top of the hinge cover. Align the inner trim between the top and bottom hinge covers. Place the outer trim evenly against the back of the door panel. Push the inner trim to contact the product door. After the test fit of the trim is complete, Peel off the tape backing around 8 to 10 inches of the top of the inner trim tape. Align the top of the trim with the top of the door panel without touching the exposed tape to the side of the door, while ensuring that the tape backing is sticking out. Ensure that the inner and outer trims are in location. Press the exposed inner trim tape on the side of the door to adhere the trim tape securely and pull out the rest of tape backing slowly until the complete tape backing is removed and adhered. After securing the inner trim tape, the top and bottom portions of the outer trim tape should be secured. To secure the trim tape, pull back the top of the outer trim slightly to expose the tape backer. Ensure that you do not bend outer trim too much to prevent damage to the trim. Peel off the outer trim tape backing and press to adhere securely. Repeat the same steps for the hinge side door trim. Note that the outer trim aligns to the top of the hinge cover to hide the exposed screws. Repeat the steps for other product. To customize the appearance, you can install custom overlay door panels for providing a flush appearance with the surrounding cabinets. Note that the improper installation can lead to a finger pinch point hazard between the side door trim and the cabinets when operating the door, especially with children. To minimize the risk of the finger pinch point hazard, you must follow the installation instructions for cabinet dimensions, trim assembly, and door stop angle. The thickness of the overlay door panel should be 3 quarter inch or 1.91 centimeters and should not weigh more than 45 pounds. Ensure that for panels constructed with rails and styles, the rails and styles are of a minimum width of 2 inch or 5.08 centimeters. For custom panels, use the templates and adjustment screws provided with the units to pre-drill holes for mounting the provided panel brackets following the installation instructions.
The minimum distance between the handle and the side edge of the overlay door panel should be one and a half inch or 3.81 centimeters. The panel provides mounting to the appliance door by attaching to included brackets. It is recommended that the decorative panels have inside corners and edges rounded or beveled to avoid sharp edges on the panels. Ensure that the edges to be treated include the top, bottom, and hinge side edges. Verify that the overall panel dimensions of the supplied material match the recommendations for the model and inspect thoroughly for any initial damage. Then, place a template on the back of the door panel so that the top edges of the template or black lines and the door panel are aligned properly and the side edges of the template and the handle side edge of the door panel are aligned as well. Use masking tape to secure the position of the template to the panel. Mark the hole locations on the door panel using a center punch. Drill pilot holes for panel mounting brackets that are not more than a half inch deep using a 5 64 inch drill bit. Hole locations on the template for the minimalist or statement handle kits are given for reference only. Do not drill. Install the top and bottom panel mounting brackets on the overlay panel using the number 6 Phillips head screws. While mounting the brackets, the cutout end of the bracket should be on the hinge side and flanges on the bracket should face toward each other. Ensure that the screws are secured flush to brackets and are not over tightened. Now, install the center mounting bracket assemblies in four places on the overlay panel with two number six Phillips head screws. After installing the top, bottom and center mounting brackets, remove the L-shaped bracket. If installing handle hardware, counter bore the panel so that screw heads are recessed. Assemble the top center bracket and secure with two Phillips head screws. To install the overlay door panel, first, remove the four T30 Torx screws and bottom hinge cover from the refrigerator door and set aside. Open the refrigerator door to 90 degrees. Slide the overlay door panel onto the refrigerator door so that the overlay door panel gets interlocked on the top and bottom of the refrigerator door brackets. Then, Slowly close the door after centering the panel on the door. Ensure that the panel does not contact the surrounding cabinetry. With the refrigerator door fully closed, ensure that the target gap between the overlay panel and the cabinetry surround is 1 8 inch. Adjust the top and side gaps of the overlay door panel with 12 set screws provided for door adjustments using a 1 8 inch Allen wrench. Each corner of the overlay door panel consists of three adjustment set screws. Please note that the vertical set screws at the top and bottom mounting brackets are partially hidden beneath the brackets. To install set screw for flush mounting, first verify the gap in alignment between the overlay panel and the cabinetry at the hinge for the first door. Set the gap between the doors. Note that for dual installation, set the handle side first. If the gap at the top is too large or uneven, use the set screws on the top bracket to adjust the gap until the gap is equal along the entire vertical section. If needed, slide the overlay panel to the side to reset the gap at 1 8 inch. To align the overlay door panel to the cabinetry, first adjust the vertical adjustment set screws at the top corners. Drive the set screw clockwise to move the door upwards. Move to the bottom corner and install the set screws. Do not tighten them yet. Install and adjust the four outermost horizontal set screws at the corners. If overlay door panel is too deep inside of the surrounding cabinetry, turn the set screws clockwise to move the door outwards until the panel is in position. Install and adjust the four innermost horizontal set screws at the corners. If overlay door panel is too far outside of the surrounding cabinetry, Turn the set screws clockwise to move the door inwards until the panel is in position. Note that the set screws on each door panel corners can be adjusted independently. Again, note that you will need to make several small adjustments on all four corners to align the door. Once the overlay door panel is in the desired position, the remaining set screws should be driven and firmly tightened to properly secure the overlay door panel. Repeat the steps for other product. Next. Secure the center mounting bracket using square washer and one quarter inch Phillips head screw. Install the hinge covers at the top and bottom of the refrigerator door with four T30 Torx screws each. Secure the hinge cover at the top with one T10 Torx screw. 
There are two door trims to install on the overlay door panel. The door trim for the handle side is a long trim and the door trim for the hinge side is a shorter trim. The side trim consists of an outer trim and an inner trim. Inner and outer trim should be adjusted vertically to align with the top and bottom hinge covers during test fit. Note that adjustments must be made before adhering to the side of the door. Note these trims slide in and out to hide the gap between the product door and the overlay door. To install the handle side trim, clean all sides along with the top and bottom hinge covers using rubbing alcohol for better trim adhesion. Test the fit of the handle trim with the side of the door without removing the backing of the handle side trim tape. Place the top of the outer trim on the top of the hinge cover. Align the inner trim between the top and bottom hinge covers. Place the outer trim evenly against the back of the door panel. Push the inner trim to contact the product door. After the test fit of the trim is complete, peel off the tape backing around 8 to 10 inches at the top of the inner trim tape. Align the top of the trim with the top of the door panel without touching the exposed tape to the side of the door while ensuring that the tape backing is sticking out. Ensure that the inner and outer trims are in location. Press the exposed inner trim tape on the side of the door to adhere the trim tape securely and pull out the rest of the tape backing slowly until the complete tape backing is removed and adhered. After securing the inner trim tape, the top and bottom portions of the outer trim tape should be secured. To secure the trim tape, pull back the top of the outer trim slightly to expose the tape backward. Ensure that you do not bend outer trim too much to prevent damage to the trim. Peel off the outer trim tape backing and press to adhere securely. Repeat the same steps for the hinge side door trim. Note that the outer trim aligns to the top of the hinge cover to hide the exposed screws. Repeat for other product. To install the door handle, place the handle caps over the fasteners on the door. Ensure that the handle is supported so it doesn't fall and scratch the appliance finish. Also, ensure that both the handle caps are resting on the face of the door. Remember that the handle appearance may vary based on the refrigerator model. Note that when installing statement handles, it is recommended to position the handle so that the set screws are facing the other handle. Note that when installing minimalist handles, you need to position the handle so that the set screws are facing the upwards and downwards. Lock one end of the handle into position by tightening the set screw in the handle cap with the Allen wrench provided. Ensure that you do not over tighten the screws. Keep supporting the handle as you lock the other end of the handle into position by tightening the set screw in the handle cap. Again, ensure that you do not over tighten the screws. In case your handle kit has multiple handles, repeat these instructions for the other handles as well. Note that the set screw location and end cap will vary based on the model. For the Columns product or Statement Handle model, set screw should assemble from handle side on Statement Handle and from top on Minimalist Handle. To prepare the internal unit, remove all tape, cardboard, and foam from each unit. Remove box door bins from shelves. Unbox and install door bins. Install door bin mats. A newly installed freezer may take 12 to 24 hours to begin making ice. The ice maker will produce 7 cubes per cycle, approximately 15 cycles in a 24-hour period, depending on freezer compartment temperature, room temperature, number of door openings, and other use conditions. Remove the top wire basket to access the ice maker power switch. If the freezer is operated before the water connection is made to the ice maker, set the power switch to off. When the freezer has been connected to the water supply, set the power switch to on. Throw away the first full bucket of ice to allow the water line to clear. Be sure nothing interferes with the sweep of the feeler arm. When the bin fills to the level of the feeler arm, the ice maker will stop producing ice. It is normal for several cubes to be joined together. Note, ice maker works best between 40 and 120 PSI home water pressure.
Locate the autofill pitcher cover on the left side of the refrigerator's interior. Remove T20 torque screw holding the cover in place towards the rear of the cover. Retain this screw to attach the autofill assembly later. Slide the cover forward to remove. This reveals an electrical connector and a water tube. Remove the autofill assembly from the box. Connect the four pin connector and the tubing from the autofill assembly to the connector in the compartment wall. Conceal wires and tubing inside the wall compartment and place the autofill wall assembly under the forward end of the mount until flush with the interior wall of the refrigerator. Slide the assembly toward the back wall until mounting screw hole is visible. Secure autofill assembly with a T20 torque screw removed earlier. Ensure supply water is connected to the refrigerator before proceeding further. Align the pitcher lid to the dispenser guide and slide the pitcher toward the back of the refrigerator until it stops. There may be up to five seconds response time before water starts to fill the pitcher. Water will fill the pitcher until it reaches a specified level and will then shut off. It is normal for the water level to be below the top of the pitcher. Note, after installing the autofill pitcher, run two gallons of water approximately five full pitchers through the autofill dispenser to remove air from the system. A newly installed filter cartridge will cause water to spurt and dribble until the air is out of the system. It is normal for water to appear discolored during the initial system flush. Water color will return to normal after the first minutes of dispensing. Wash the autofill pitcher following the initial flush before using. The refrigerator is now ready for Wi-Fi connectivity setup. Wi-Fi is available only in some models and for customers in the United States, its territories, and Canada. Download the Smart HQ app from the App Store on your mobile device or visit the website geappliances.com. This main installation is complete now. To learn how to reverse the door swing, proceed to the next chapter. Follow the warning instructions in order to ensure safety while reversing the door swing. Failure to follow these instructions, leaving off parts or over-tightening screws can lead to the door falling off and result in injury and property damage. This appliance is top-heavy, especially with the door open, and must be secured to prevent tipping forward which could result in death or serious injury. Now, open the door and have the second person support the open door. Remove the two T30 Torx screws securing the top hinge to the case. Likewise, remove the two T30 Torx screws securing the bottom hinge to the case. Place the door on a protected work surface to prevent scratches liner side down. Note that the door hinges are under tension and should be left in the open position throughout the reversal procedure. Closing the hinge can lead to a finger pinch point hazard. First step is to remove the upper enclosure. Open the front cover of the enclosure to 90 degrees and locate the filter and filter removal tool. To remove the filter, use the tool to rotate the filter a quarter turn counterclockwise and then pull it towards you. Note that the water system will not function without the filter in place. Remove the six quarter inch hex screws securing the front enclosure to the top case. To move control assembly, first remove the upper hinge brackets by removing the T30 Torx screws. Then, remove the Phillips head screw from the middle of the housing on the hinge side. Now insert a flathead screwdriver or putty knife between the glass front and plastic side and free the control assembly by prying the plastic pins clear of the side bracket holes. Lay the glass assembly on top of the control housing. Using a quarter inch hex bit, remove four screws, two on each end, to remove the housing assembly. Move the housing assembly to the opposite side and install using four screws, two screws on each side. Make sure wires do not get pinched. On an 18 inch model, the red, white, black, five pin wire connector needs to be removed from the control board and routed through the opposite quarter bracket and reconnected to the control board to prevent pinching the wiring. Snap glass assembly back onto the control housing assembly 
ensuring plastic pins snap into holes on the side of the housing. To move light switch housing, remove the front access cover from unit by removing the two quarter inch hex head screws. Then, remove the Phillips screw and the lower hinge brackets by removing the three T30 torque screws. Remove the screw at the bottom corner of light switch housing with Phillips driver. Slide the housing forward and down to remove from case and grommets on case bottom. Keeping it connected to the unit, lay the housing aside. Move the mounting bracket to the other side of the unit by removing two Phillips screws and using them to install the bracket in its new location. Remove two grommets with Phillips driver. Move grommets to the set of two holes on opposite side. Align housing keyholes over grommets and then slide back until engaged. Ensure wires do not get pinched. Install the Phillips screw in the bottom hole to hold in place. Now, reinstall the hinge brackets. Move the top hinge bracket to bottom and the bottom bracket to top. Note that you have to flip the bracket to perform this step. Ensure that the two rectangular slots of the bracket are on outside, hinge side of the case. Install both the brackets with three T30 Torx screws tightened to 45 inch pounds. Install the Phillips screw. Start to screw two screws in each bracket to mount the hinge but do not tighten all the way. Secure the enclosure assembly with the six quarter inch hex head screws previously removed. Insert filter into its position to align to the blue arrow on the filter and rotate a quarter turn clockwise using the filter removal tool. Return the filter removal tool to mounting hook. Close the compartment door. Before you remove the hinges from the refrigerator door, note that the door hinges are under tension and should be left in the open position throughout the reversal procedure. Closing the hinge can lead to a finger pinch point hazard. Begin with removing the three screws securing each hinge from the top and bottom of the door and one T30 Torx screw securing the support bracket to the door. Now, move the hinge assembly to the opposite end of the door. Then move the top hinge to the bottom and bottom hinge to the top. Notice that the hinge, the L bracket already attached to hinge, and the support bracket will all move together. The two shims between the hinge bracket and door will be moved to the other side. Save these for installing the hinge later. Remove the panel brackets on each end of the door by removing the T30 Torx screws. Slide the same bracket on each end to other side of door and reinstall the brackets to the door. Now install the hinges to the door, ensuring that the two shims are between the hinge L bracket and the door with three T30 Torx screws tightened to 45 inch pounds. Ensure that the L bracket remains attached to the hinge and is on the outer side of the door and the hinge is on the inner door side. Remember that the hinges have to move from top to bottom and from bottom to top. Finally, install the support bracket screw through both the support bracket and the panel bracket. Have the second person hold the door with hinges near the correct position while you install the top hinges with keyhole over screws and slide bracket. Likewise, install the bottom hinges. Before tightening the screws, ensure that the two tabs on the hinges are inserted into the rectangular slots on the outside of the hinge brackets. Tighten the bottom and top screws tightened to 45 inch pounds. Carefully ensure the door closes correctly and gasket aligns with case. The installation procedure to reverse the door swing is complete now.